A mystery worthy of Hollywood, but tragically, it's no fiction. Just over two weeks ago, movie publicist Ronnie Chasen was driving her Mercedes home on Sunset Boulevard when a gunman pulled up and opened fire. Since then, the story has emerged in bits and pieces. A sharpshooter, a shabby apartment complex, and a boisterous neighbor who talked big until last night when police officers came knocking. Mike Von Fremd has our report. The investigation into the mysterious murder of high-end Hollywood publicist Ronnie Chasen went markedly downscale last night when investigators went to question a man, neighbors say, called himself Harold, in this seedy Hollywood apartment building. As officers approached him in the lobby, he took out a gun and shot himself. They attempted to uh, talk to the suspect. Um, when they did, the suspect uh, uh, produced a handgun and there was a self-inflicted gunshot wound at that point in time and the uh, suspect was pronounced at the scene. Eddie Burke and his son were staying at the hotel. We left the building for a few hours and then as we returned we were a little more than a block away and all hell broke loose here on Santa Monica Boulevard. Terry Gilpin was neighbors with Harold who they say described himself as an ex-con. He confessed to her that he killed Chasen and that he was owed $10,000 for the hit. He said he was expecting a big pile of money to come in. Brandon said, well, what are, what, are, what are you getting money for? And he goes, oh, yeah, you know, the publicist on TV. And then he said, I'm getting $10,000. What did he say about the publicist? He just said, oh, that publicist on, the, on, on, on there, I, I did it. I did it. Police tell ABC News they are conducting a ballistics test to see if the gun used in the suicide is the same gun used to kill Ronnie Chasen. The uh, investigation is ongoing at this time. We've got nothing further to disclose about the investigation. 64-year-old Ronnie Chasen built a career as one of Hollywood's elite publicists, promoting Morgan Freeman and Driving Miss Daisy, and the Oscar-winning film Slumdog Millionaire. But Jason's life came to a tragic end just two weeks ago. Here she is, her final walk down the red carpet at the invitation-only premiere for the film Burlesque. Jason was working on an Oscar campaign for the film's soundtrack. I'm down now, but I'll be standing tall again. After the premiere's after party, Jason drove her black Mercedes home down this road after midnight. Her car was found smashed into a light pole five bullet wounds in her chest, back and shoulder. The passenger side window shattered. Jason was rushed to the hospital where she died in less than an hour. We don't have crimes like this in the city of Beverly Hills, so it is a surprise to us. We've got numerous investigators at the scene that are trying to piece this thing together. We don't have a motive at this time. We don't have any suspect information. ABC News has seen a copy of the initial coroner's report, which is now under a security hold. The report says one bullet was recovered from her back while at the hospital and is possibly a 9 millimeter hollow point. She received three apparent gunshot wounds to the chest area, two apparent gunshot wounds to the right shoulder. Early the next morning, police are sifting through the computers Chasen kept in her office and home, searching for clues to this seemingly senseless murder. Just to see him smile. Carol Connors knew Ronnie for years. She co-wrote the Rocky soundtrack, which Chasen helped promote. If she was promoting a film, I believe that, or the music to the film, she gave that project 110% of Ronnie Chasen. And all the people that worked for her, they loved her. Police have scoured surveillance video of the area of Beverly Hills known as the Bermuda Triangle. In 1946, Howard Hughes survived a plane crash here. Gangster Bugsy Siegel was gunned down on the street. It's a strip of road made famous by Jan and Dean in the song Dead Man's Curve. And it is now the location of one of the biggest Hollywood whodunits ever. Detectives suspect the gunfire came from an SUV or truck pulling alongside, and detectives say it appears the shooter was an expert marksman. Normally they, they turn that gun sideways, and this is something that's done, you know, with some skill. I carried a gun for 38 years and had to qualify quarterly. I don't know that I could shoot, you know, hit that uh, mass like that. Gil Carrillo was a homicide detective for more than 20 years here in Los Angeles and helped solve the famous Night Stalker case. What does your gut tell you happened here? My gut tells me that somebody contracted someone else to uh, 
kill the victim. Howard Bragman is a veteran Hollywood publicist. In the case of Ronnie, I don't believe this was a payback for something that happened with the client. I think it was a different issue, I would guess. What sort of issue could come to mind? When you talk about murder, and particularly what I believe this was a murder for hire, really three things come into play, Mike. I think you're talking about number one, pride. I think number two is romance. And number three is money. And probably 95% of the time, it's about money. Chasen certainly was not lacking for cash. Her will, just obtained by ABC News, has her valued at more than $6 million. While the Hollywood press has been searching for motives for this seemingly random crime, tight-lipped investigators are still trying to determine the connection between the suicide in Hollywood and Chasen's murder. One thing is certain, for this story, there will be no Hollywood ending. For Nightline, this is Mike Von Fremd in Beverly Hills.